We're gonna pick a random product from the Amazon search page and we're gonna model, texture, and render it inside of Blender. Everybody wants to know how to make some money with Blender. Well, this is how you do it. You look at their product, you make it in Blender, you make some cool footage of it, then you send it to them and you tell them if they want more footage like this, you can do it if they pay you some money. If you wanna learn more about the tools and techniques that you see me use in my videos, then check out my new Blender ebook, the link is below. Amazon is a great way to get reference images because you can just click on an image like this, right click, save image as, and you got a high resolution image to look at. I always make a separate folder which is going to be just for this particular project. In this case, we're gonna save textures, references, whatever we need for this tub of fucking protein, and we're gonna put them all in this one folder. Typically, if you're doing something like this for a client, then they're going to have to send you images of the labels and the various shit that you have to put on the object. I'm not working with this company, I'm just doing this for the video. And unfortunately, when I search for this company's label on Google, Google images, I can't find this exact label. Luckily, if you just search whey protein label on Google images, you're going to find a bunch of different labels from a bunch of different companies and you can just use one of those. That's going to be useful for me in this case because I don't have to make this exact company's tub. So I can just pick any image and download that to my computer and I'll be good to go. Now, sometimes you won't be able to find any high resolution images. You're just going to be able to find shitty stuff like 288 by 790. It's going to look grainy in the product. You don't want this. So you can take a relatively low resolution image from Google and then go to this website called Upscale media now click on this upload button you can upload any image you want load up the label that you downloaded it might give you some bullshit like this that nobody on earth knows the right answer to so just give it a couple of tries and it's gonna let you through eventually then after you wait a couple minutes you can just download the upscaled image you can also upscale it further to forex that's up to you once you've done that download the image and you're ready to go so inside blender i first need to set up my background image that i can use to determine the proportions of this top so i'll go to side view shift a image reference and then I'm going to load up this picture of a tub that I downloaded from Amazon. I want a little bit of transparency on this image so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. I'll make this sit on top of the axes and I'll just throw it in the background. Now we're ready to start modeling this thing. So this is going to be pretty simple. Just go to shift A, mesh, circle. I'm going to go with something like 16 vertices because I'm going to use a subdivision surface modifier on this. Then I'll scale it up to make sure the width is correct. I'll fill in the circle with F. And now I can just extrude this all the way to the top of the tub. We need to select this edge loop at the top here. And with control B, we have to bevel it. It has to be a pretty wide bevel like this. We're going to scroll up to subdivide it a little bit further. Once the bevel is right, we can delete some of the geometry at the top. And then we can use this to extrude the neck of this tub. We're going to make this little plastic rim here. And then we can take this circle, duplicate it. With P, we're going to separate it to new object. And we can use that new object to extrude out the cap. This is pretty simple stuff. You can't possibly fuck this up. Just extrude, scale, extrude, scale, and you're good to go. At the top here, we're going to create a tiny bevel with only one segment and we also have to create a bevel on the bottom of this bucket i want a loop cut right here which i'm going to bevel with control b and i want the two segments created from this one to come very close to these bevels which we created on the top and the bottom the reason i'm doing this is so that when i add a subdivision surface modifier i'm going to have more control over this shape over here don't bring them too close because that's going to make them look a little bit too sharp but you want it to be something like this. I also want to bevel this with control B. That needs to have two segments in a shape of one. I'll do the same on these inner segments here. Then I'm also going to add a subdivision surface modifier to the lid object. And on the lid object, I'm going to select all of the edge loops. And with control B, I'm going to add a tiny bevel just to control the shading on that a little bit better. Select both of the objects, go to object, shade smooth. Now the model is ready. We just have to add some materials and textures. So let's switch over to the shading workspace, create a new material, which we're going to name black plastic. This obviously has to be a black material and it's up to you how you want to control the roughness for this. I'm going to make the lid pretty smooth. Then I'll select the body of the tub and I want to apply the same material to that, but I'm going to press this little button to duplicate that material. And I'm going to rename that new material to something like black plastic rough. And this is because the body of this tub has to be a little bit more rough than the lid. Now, if you want to be really cool, here's something that you can do to make the body look a little bit more detailed. In the black plastic rough material, add a new noise texture node. Then go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and type in a node wrangler. Check this add-on right here. Select the noise texture node and press Control T. Change the texture coordinate from generated to object. Add a bump node right here plug the color into height and the height into normal. Now this is gonna make your surface look like no man's land, but we're about to change that. First of all, reduce the strength to something like 0.1. Increase the scale by a lot. You can zoom in and tweak some of these other settings if you want to. I think with detail zero, it looks quite nice. And I'm going to reduce the strength a little bit further. You figure out what works best in your case. You can also add a clear coat to this material to make the surface look smooth. It's just kind of going to look like there's something underneath the surface, which I think looks a little bit better, especially when we add some clear coat roughness. When you're working with materials in Blender and you're viewing them in the material preview, go to this menu over here and make sure to try out a few of the different HDRIs that you have 
built into Blender. This is going to give you a better preview of what the material looks like in different environments and make sure to consider this when you're doing whatever it is you're doing. If you intend to render a product in studio lighting, you probably don't want to preview the materials in a scene that looks like a park. Right now the colors of this material look way off, so you probably want to experiment with this shit a little bit and see what works best for you. Now I'm going to apply the subdivision surface modifier to the body. With alt right click we're going to select one edge loop up here on top, this is going to be the top of the label, and we're also going to select one edge loop down here at the bottom. Then press ctrl E, mark seam, and we're also going to have to mark an edge segment in the back here so that we can unwrap this. The reason we're doing it in the back is because we don't want to see this seam when we render the product. Now go to face select mode, hover your mouse over this surface, and then press L to select loose part. This is going to select everything outlined by the seams which we mark. You can also change the attribute by which you want to select a loose part down here. For example, you can select everything that has the same material, you can select everything defined by sharps, we don't have any sharps, or whatever, experiment with this a little bit. This is the type of shit that I talk about in my ebook, this is the type of shit that nobody ever talks about, and this is the reason that I made the ebook. Because there's a bunch of shit in there that you never even knew existed in Blender. I didn't even know that this little menu existed down here when you select by loose part. So guess what? This is going in the ebook now. Anyway, with this selected, we're going to add a new material slot, assign that to the selected area, create a new material in that new slot. That has to be black, and I'm going to reduce the roughness because the label has to be a bit more shiny than the body. Now you just have to apply the texture to this label. So we're going to rename this material to label, shift A, image texture node. You can also drag and drop your texture into here. Click on open and load up your label image. If you're smart, then you're using an upscaled image because otherwise it's probably gonna look like shit. Plug that into the base color of the principal node. And now we just see a red color because we haven't UV mapped this correctly. So select this entire label again, press U and click on UV unwrap. Now we can see the texture, but it's still not mapped correctly. So go to UV editing. This is our UV map over here. We're going to have to rotate that by 90 degrees and we can now control how this texture is displayed on this surface. We have to make this island a lot bigger so that the texture fits onto the bottle. In this case, it's not so important that every single part of this label is fitted onto the actual object. You can't even see the stuff in the back. It's probably more important that it just looks better in the rendered image. So if you have to stretch it out a little bit or crop it in the back here, it doesn't matter as long as the front looks really nice. I'm going to compress my image a little bit by scaling up the UV map on the x-axis in the UV editor. And this way more of the label is going to fit into this part which we can see. Obviously don't do it too much because it's going to look too stretched and it's going to look distorted. You don't want this to look like shit, you want this to look good, right? A lot of people in Blender like to pretend like you have to do everything by the book. Most of the time, it doesn't really matter how you do it, as long as you do it, as long as you get the result that you're supposed to get. If it looks stupid, but it works, it ain't stupid. And if that bothers you, it's probably because you're stupid. I know you guys love to give me shit in the comments. I'm still gonna do what I do, whether you like it or not. I'm still gonna make money. You can either listen to me or don't listen to me. It's your choice. But now the tub is more or less ready, we just have to make a little scene where we can render it. This is also really easy to do. Just add a plane, take an edge from the back and extrude it upwards. If you need some ideas for how to render this, you can always just go to Google and type in protein powder. Find some images that look cool. You can even render this with a transparent background and add a custom design to the background. For this particular example, I just want to make this look simple and realistic. So I'm just going to make a simple white background. I'll go to side view and with control alt zero, I'm going to align my camera with my view. We're going to set the resolution to 1080 by 1080 because this is going to give us an aspect ratio of one on one. And in your camera settings your focal length is going to make a big difference you can place your camera really far away and then zoom in this is going to make the bottle look very flat and straight or you can use a very low focal length and then bring the camera very close to the object and this is going to make it appear more curved and it's going to get in your face a little bit more again it depends on what you're trying to accomplish it depends on what your client wants it depends on what you think looks best just try out a couple of things eventually you're going to find something that looks good and then use that as for the lighting you're probably going to need to render this with an hdri so go to this website called hdri haven and you can download a bunch of environment textures here. I want something which is going to be bright, but the shading is not going to be very hard like in this image over here. Using the word studio in the search gives me some pretty good results. For example, I think this one right here is gonna work pretty well. And that's just because of the colors and the soft shading, we can always make it brighter inside of Blender. So just download that. In the shading tab, go from object to world, and now you're editing the nodes for the world texture. Select the background node and press Control T. In the environment texture node, load up your HDRI. You can search for it by either typing HDR or EXR, those are typically two formats that you're gonna download from HDRI websites. Now switch to the Cycles render engine because EV looks like shit and you can get a render preview of what your bottle is going to look like. Set your number of samples to at least 128. You might want to go higher than this, but for me this tends to work pretty well. And then just hit F12 and you're good to go. And now you have your rendered image, so go up here to image, save as and save it to your computer. Now this supplement company is gonna be able to use your image to convince some 16 year old kid that he can't get jacked without protein powder. This is 
not the final product yet. We still have to do some post-processing. I'm not going to show you how I do the post-processing, but here's the before image and here's the after image. I usually do this by emailing the picture to myself, downloading it on my phone, and then adjusting some of the settings like brightness, contrast, saturation, and all this bullshit on my phone because your phone probably has a better screen than your computer. It's much better at displaying colors. Unless you have a super high-end monitor, your phone, even if it's cheap, probably has a much better screen. Then if you're good at graphic design, you can also add some text. Maybe you can do a little animation. You can add a company logo. You can do whatever you want with this. You can now download a bunch of the stuff that you see me making my videos on my Patreon page. You got guns, knives, vehicles, and also some non-violent objects like this one over here. So if you want to look at these models more closely, check out my Patreon page. If you learned something from this video, subscribe to the fucking channel. At least drop a like. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next one.